Good morning, church, and happy Easter, one and all. It is so good to have you with us here at Ankeny United Church. Indeed, as we prepare to enter into this time of worship, let us hear this Easter proclamation, for I tell you, indeed, that Christ is risen. Oh, no, 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 not on an Easter Sunday. We're not going to take that as an acceptable response. I tell you, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. As we enter into this time of worship, let us take a deep breath together. Feel the love of God permeate every atom, every cell in your body, and let us join together as we hear these words of welcome and our call to worship. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Sunday worship at Ankeny United Church and those watching us at home on ankenyucc.org. We are a welcoming church family, exploring progressive Christian theology, caring within and serving beyond. We are living, loving, and growing together. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are invited to walk with us this morning. And that means Regardless of whether you are a visitor or a member or uncertain of your place in the world, you are welcome here. Whether you are renewed from the promise or the empty tomb or find yourself questioning alongside doubting Thomas, you are welcome here. Whether you find peace in quiet isolation or prefer the company of people around you, you are welcome here. No matter your family of origin or your family of choosing, you are welcome here. And no matter who you love, you are welcome here. No matter your gender identity, or if you don't identify with gender at all, you are welcome here. No matter of you or your family's ability or accessibility needs, you are welcome here. And children of all ages and abilities are welcome here as well, as we never mind a little noise or disruption in the service, if it means there is sounds of life here. However, if you wish, we also have a staff nursery, should you need it. This is the worship of God at Ankeny United Church, and we are so glad that you are here. So I invite you to rise in body or spirit to join us in the call to worship. We come to this place seeking Jesus in the familiar story of our faith. Do not meet us only here, O living Christ, but surprise us we gather together to sing and pray the story we know by heart, a story of loving triumph and powerful grace. This story is our story. It is a story of love and life. We join in our hearts in song and sing, Alleluia, thanks be to God, for Christ is living and so are we. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please turn to page 233 in the black hymnal for Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today.
Indeed, it is a good day to be with us all in this time of worship. So at this time, I invite you to turn to one another and let us wish a happy Easter to one and all. You may all be seated for our responsive reading of the Living Psalm. Give thanks to the Lord because God is good, because God's faithful love lasts forever. Let Israel say it, God's faithful love lasts forever. The Lord is my strength and protection. God was my saving help. The sounds of joyful songs and deliverance are heard in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's strong hand is victorious. The Lord's strong hand is ready to strike. The Lord's strong hand is victorious. I won't die, no. I will live and declare what the Lord has done. As we prepare to enter into a time of prayer, let us join together to sing our prayerful refrain. As always, when we join together, we lift up prayers communally so that we can lift up prayers that are on our hearts, prayers of joy and of sorrow, of celebration and of worry, so that we might all pray together. And as, I, as we lift up prayers, I, we will follow them and I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and you respond with, hear our prayer. So I ask, what are some prayers we can lift up for our church today? Any prayers today? One for my brother, Patrick. He has a chronic kidney disease and is entering a new phase of that disease. He had his equipment installed into his arm so he could start dialysis. So prayers for him as he transitions to this stage. For Patrick in this new next stage of treatment that he might feel loved and God feeling love might be upon him and his family. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Other prayers this morning. Prayer of thankfulness and joy for Laura, our choir director, and for the uh, and and for the great joy that singing in the choir brings to all of us. Amen to that. For Laura, her tireless uh, dedication, her gifts that she has given to this church, for the gift of music, we give thanks, Lord, in your mercy. Your Any other prayers this morning? Well, I would like us to pray for all the religions all over the world to continue to fight with one another over their different ideas of what God is. Mm. It's, this is not what Christ ever envisioned, and it's very, very sad. Prayers of peace that we might all learn to coexist, to accept one another, recognizing that we are all brothers and sisters on this planet that we call our home. Lord, in your mercy. Any other prayers? 
And will you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Gracious God, like Mary long ago, we find ourselves standing before the empty tomb filled with anxiety, worry, frustration, and fear. Uncertain of what has taken place, we can only count on your voice to calm us. And as we turn and witness you in all of your glory, our hearts are filled with hope and understanding and praise. As we celebrate that love is the strongest force in the universe, not, not death, not fear, but love, may that love rest upon us on this day. And God, we know as we have lifted up these prayers today that you have heard us when we fall. And yet we know that there are just some prayers that are too powerful to be spoken aloud. And so we take a moment of silence to lift up those other prayers that rest quietly in the deepest recesses of our hearts. God, knowing that you hear us when we call, we join once together as a congregation to sing our prayerful refrain. So as a gathered community, in whatever language, whatever tradition of our choosing, let us now join together to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to invite all of the young people to come forward and join me for young person's time this morning. Come on up. Children, come to share and listen. Children, come with those who care. We'll be with you in your knowing when you go. We'll still be there. It's so good to see you this morning. 
Now, we know that today is Easter, but who knows what Easter is all about? What, I'm afraid to ask. What do you think Easter is about? <gasps> That's right. So what happened was when Jesus died, people thought, well, that's the end of it. That's it. No more Jesus, no more faith that we profess. But, but on Easter morning, something incredible happened. They thought that he had died. They put him in a sort of a, a big tomb, but they thought, you know, where they, yeah, they put him inside of, sort of like a cave looking thing. They sealed him up. They thought that was the end of it. Now they're going to go about their, their lives as sad as they were. But, but come Easter morning, he's gone. His body's gone. Where they thought that they had placed him, he was gone. And for a while they were worried they stole him or took him away. But then, as we're going to hear in our story this morning, there he was, standing right outside the tomb, talking as though he were standing right in front of us here and now, living, breathing, and telling us the good news that love is stronger than death. That is the strongest force in the entire universe. And that is something we're celebrating today. So while it is certainly a day to have fun and to celebrate with Easter bunnies and Easter eggs and chocolates and candies and all the good stuff, let us also remember what today is all about. So we're going to do our special prayer. You remember how it goes? We put our hands forward and we say, let us pray. Lord Jesus, be with us every day and help us grow in every way. Amen.
scripture this morning from Acts 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter said, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism John preached. John preached. You know about Jesus of Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. Jesus traveled around doing good and healing everyone oppressed by the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses whom God uh, chosen beforehand who ate and drank with him after God raised him from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God has appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. We also have John 20, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, they've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrapping, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the foot. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascended to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her.
Will you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Holy word, holy wisdom, be in our hearts, in our understanding, and in our actions on this day. Amen. It was the frantic stomping above me that woke me in a start in the middle of the night. And as I shot up out of my bunk, I knew something was wrong. Sure enough, a moment later, the captain's voice rang out above over our head of the, the ship. It was loud, it was full of worry, and my suspicions were confirmed. Something had to have gone terribly wrong. He shouted, everyone up, all hands on deck. Immediately, myself and the 10 other Boy Scouts and our three adult leaders scrambled out of our beds and we took off running upstairs to the deck of our schooner. Up until this point, it had been a fantastic trip, right? So some of my older members of the Boy Scout troop I was a part of, including myself and then three adult leaders, had undergone what is called a high adventure scouting trip together, which is specifically designed for scouts toward the end of high school because it's due to the level of effort and the potential danger involved. And so our high adventure trip that we were on was pretty straightforward. The 13 of us plus a captain and the first mate would pilot and sail a schooner from Miami to Key West and back again. It was pretty straightforward. We were on the third day of the trip, and, and things had gone smoothly so far. We'd take turns navigating while the rest of us would practice tying knots, or we would practice securing the sails. In the afternoons, we'd drop anchor off a coral reef. We'd go snorkeling, ever mindful of the countless jellyfish and barracudas that swam nearby. And at night, we'd drop anchor, and we'd take turns keeping watch above deck. And the reason being is we had to make sure we weren't drifting too far off course, that we weren't dragging anchor in the middle of the night. And it's hard to do. With no land in sight, surrounded by only the dark water, you had to learn how to navigate and take hourly positional readings by the stars. But you see, that particular night, as I ran up from below deck, something fell off, something was wrong. And it took me a moment, but then it finally set in. There were no stars in the sky. The stars had gone. All at once, the silence broke and the sky shattered. A massive bolt of lightning lit up the sky and I could see why the stars had disappeared. Black, swirling, menacing clouds swirled overhead and as if it was waiting for lightning as its cue, suddenly the heavens opened up and sheets of rain started pouring down upon us. The wind picked up and we all scrambled to our stations trying to secure the sails and grabbing onto ropes and railings as we tried to navigate across the slick deck as the waves started to toss our boat from side to side. And for what seemed like hours, we fought against that storm. We had to tie down anything that was loose while bracing ourselves for wave after wave as it crashed against our ship, our captain continuing to bark orders at us, his voice barely audible over the raging storm. And finally, finally after what seemed like an eternity but might have only been 30 minutes, who knows, suddenly the storm stopped as quickly as it had begun. All of us soaked, drenched from head to toe with every muscle in our bodies screaming out from exhaustion and pain. We all just collapsed right where we stood on the deck of the ship. And it was silent. You could only hear the ragged breathing of us, exhausted but alive. But it was right there in that moment that something incredible happened. As I found myself laying down, my back on the ship, my head rolled over to what must have been the east, because at that moment, I saw the sun begin to rise. And it wasn't just a normal sun, this was a bright red 
and magenta sun as it started to peek out over the horizon of the water. And all at once, the entire ocean lit up like it was made of rubies. In that moment, we just laid there, all of us, in total silence, just staring out at the sun as we watched it rise over the now peaceful water. A morning I know none of us will ever forget. You see, that sunrise, that sunrise will always remind me of Easter morning. See, Easter is the single most important day of the Christian faith, more so than Pentecost, more so than Epiphany, even more than Christmas, maybe not as fun as Christmas for some of us. And it's not special important because of the Easter bunny or because we get to eat chocolates and go Easter egg hunting, although, to be honest, that doesn't hurt. It was so adorable watching the kids do their Easter hunt last Sunday. It was amazing. But Easter is the most important day of the Christian calendar year because it marks the day that love overcame the bonds of death. It is the moment when our world was shown that death does not have the final word in this life, that love is more powerful than hate, and that hope, hope can keep us going when everything else seems lost. Today we heard the story of Mary Magdalene approaching the tomb, and saw that the stone had been rolled away and that the tomb had been emptied. She panics in that moment. It's so hard to imagine what swirl of emotion she must have been feeling. She panics, she runs to tell Peter, and they both race back to the tomb, worried that someone had stolen Jesus' body. You can imagine as they are running drenched with sweat as they are approaching the tomb. Inside of them, a violent storm is raging. Over the past week, so much had happened. They had seen Jesus celebrated and exalted as he processed in Jerusalem with the crowd waving their palm branches and calling him the King of Kings. Just a few days ago, they had seen Judas, a beloved friend of theirs, betray the one that they loved. They saw the crowd turn against Jesus as their shouts of Hosanna turned to shouts of crucify. They had witnessed the mocking, the beating, and the crucifixion of their Savior. They saw him die before their very eyes. And now this... Now this, it wasn't enough that they had killed him, but now they had taken his body and wouldn't give him the dignity of a proper burial. Inside their souls, that storm was raging, and they were fighting desperately to hold on to something as despair crept into their hearts. And filled with that despair, the other disciples left. They still didn't understand what had taken place. But Mary, Mary remained. Mary, who had followed Jesus for so long, remained there with her grief. And just when it seemed like all hope has been lost, when it seemed like the storm would capsize the ship and tear her soul asunder, the angels appeared to her. And turning around, she saw Jesus there with her own eyes. Mary was the first person that Jesus appeared to after his resurrection. It wasn't Peter. It wasn't any of the male disciples. It was Mary. In her time of need, in this immense moment of grief, Mary needed a miracle in her life. And she witnessed the most incredible miracle of all. Seeing him, calling him teacher, that storm passed as she herself saw the sun rise. Within her, hope took root and flourished again. Life thrived against all odds. Love overcame death. And it was a love that was freely given to all. That, that is why Easter is so important to us. That's why it's the most important holiday in the Christian faith. 
precisely because of what it promises us. Now, it's not the promise that life won't be difficult, that we won't experience pain, grief, uncertainty, and doubt. In fact, it's part of the human existence. It is a part of our lives that we feel these things. But rather, the promise of Easter is that when we do experience these painful moments in life, that we know deep in our hearts that we are not alone. That there is something more out there. That there is something better for us on the horizon. Something indescribable and beautiful. It is the promise that that storm we face will one day end. And if we hold on to the things that matter most, like love and kindness and generosity, if we work together to fight through that stormy night, we too will witness that beautiful sun rise. So my friends, the next time you find yourself in the midst of a raging storm, the next time it seems like the world is falling apart around you, when it seems as like all you can do is simply hold on for dear life, remember our Easter story. Remember the promise of redemption and new life that it brings, and remember that the storm will one day pass, and that the sun will rise again. Happy Easter, and thanks be to God. Amen. And so, my friends, I say to you indeed on this day, especially on this day, now don't make me do this a second time. <laughs> I say to you indeed that God is good. All the time. And all the time. To share the goodness of our God.
Please join me as we dedicate this morning's offering. Let us pray. Risen and living Christ, bless these gifts along with our very lives. May gifts and givers alike be dedicated to your work of love, hope, justice, and peace. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I'm going to invite the new members of our church to come forward if they wish. Not if they wish. Come forward if you. <laughs> the one exception is Robin. If she wants to say where she is, she can. It's up to you. Come on. Sage, come on up, bud. You're included in this. Come on up. Here, we'll have everyone down here so Robin has to, doesn't have to do the steps. It has been an absolute joy to get to know these individuals. Uh, it has been a blessing to hear about them, a little bit of their history, their story. Um, the Proper family sends their regards. They actually had a baptism they had to be at today, but they're very excited to be joining us as well. Uh, but just so that, once again, you know who they are, I'm not gonna make you do the full introductions, but at least your names as we go down through the line here. Jim Weiss. Robin Zolan. Bob Duranlo. Shonda Duranlo. Sage. Allison Borstad. Colleen Borstad. Ron Borstad, his dad. <laughs> and me, Eric. I'm actually joining you all as well, which is lovely. It has been a joy to have these wonderful members officially join us, and we hope that this is the start of something even more. So if you're interested in learning or wanting to become new members here, Listen, we can start another new members class right up as soon as we have uh, people who are willing. But at this time, I have questions to the candidates. If you could follow along in your bulletin, if you have one, all you have to do is just listen and I'll, I'll tell you what to say. Okay. Do you desire to enter into this faith family, becoming a full member of Ankeny United Church of Christ? If so, answer, I do. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves our community and our world? If so, answer, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Now here comes your piece. You have a part to play as well. Let us, as members of Ankeny United Church, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you into the membership of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we work together to build the future of this church. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love as we transform our world one life at a time. On behalf of Ankeny United Church of Christ and with joy in my heart, I invite us all to officially welcome the newest members of our faith family. Welcome, y'all did great. Now you can go sit back down. As we celebrate the gift of life in our world and in our church, I invite us now to join as we sing our sending hymn, Number 245, let us rise if you are able in body or in spirit to sing the day of resurrection. The day of resurrection, earth tell it from abroad. The Passover of gladness, the Passover of God, from death to life eternal, from earth unto the sky, our Christ has brought us over with Oh. 
You may be seated for our commissioning. What events are going on in the life of the community or church that we need to draw people's attention to? Uh, for those who haven't had a chance to see them, our Lenten gardens are on full display up here on our altar. Feel free to come take a look after worship. The centerpiece, of course, is Robin's. She went above and beyond. I love it. So make sure to come take a look at it if you get a chance. Anything going on in the life of the church? I would invite you to keep uh, up to date with on the website. That is where we post a lot of information. The newsletter for the upcoming month is posted online, and there's hard copies out on the bulletin board as well. They have some important dates and events coming up in the life of the church, so please feel free to keep up to date. Seeing nothing, then let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord, to celebrate the gift of new life as we too have watched the sun rise once more. Let us go in peace. Amen.